Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. We are on block 9 of our Sew With Me series. So block number 9 in our Sew With Me series is this cute pinwheel block. Now we are going to be doing a little bit of a variation on the pinwheel. The traditional pinwheel would just be those pink and background fabrics, but we're going to add in that fun blue, navy blue accent fabric behind. So it kind of looks like there's a square peeking out behind our pinwheel. This is really fun and easy to make. I'm calling this the double pinwheel because I couldn't find the exact name for it. Um, a double pinwheel traditionally would actually have the fabric going right here on this diagonal. So the blue would actually extend up right here and would be more in the shape of a triangle. But I thought it would be fun to do something a little different, so we're gonna do the square behind the pinwheel. In today's video, we're also gonna learn all about bias edges and how to handle them. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks so that you're not afraid of any patterns that might call for a bias edge cutting in the future. So let's go ahead and dive right into our fun pinwheel block. Make sure you download your free PDF pattern that will be linked below the video. And if you're having a hard time downloading it, right click on the link and then select save file as and that should work. So here is our fabric that we're gonna need for today. Now I've got two pieces of our C fabric, two pieces of our A fabric, and then two pieces of our B fabric. So today we're gonna learn a little bit about our fabric because we're gonna be cutting our fabric on the bias. So if you take your fabric and you stretch it with the grain, this is kind of like it would come off the bolt. You can see it's not very stretchy, but if you stretch it diagonally, there's quite a bit of stretch there. That is your bias edge. So if you ever have a pattern that says you're gonna be cutting on the bias, or if you're doing bias binding or anything like that, it means that you're gonna be cutting your fabric going diagonally across the grain, which is gonna give it a lot of stretch. And so in order to work with that, without our pieces stretching around too much and distorting, we're gonna go ahead and just lightly starch our fabric. So I'm gonna use Mary Ellen's Best Press. This is just a spray starch, but it's kind of, in my opinion, a lighter starch. I don't feel like it makes your fabric quite as, um, I don't know, stiff as like a heavy starch would. So I actually really love using this. And I'm just gonna show you how I use it here. Now, ideally you would probably start your fabric before you cut out your squares. Um, I didn't today. And one thing that I will say is if you're going to be using like the really heavy duty starch where you really saturate your fabric, it can actually cause your fabric to shrink. I've never actually had my fabric shrink when I'm using the best press. So um, I haven't actually worried about it. But how we're gonna use this is really simple. We're just gonna kind of spray some on here. And then we're just gonna take a nice warm iron we're just gonna press it until it's dry. So very easy, and you can do both sides if you want. If you have something where you're doing really small pieces or um, you know where you just really need things to be accurate, you can spray both sides. Truthfully, I almost never do that. I almost always just do one side. And you can see that our fabric now has kind of more of a um, stiffness to it. And I'll show you if we do, we'll do two sides on this one. And really you can saturate it. I didn't do a very good job there, but I'll just show you what it looks like when you do two sides. So this piece we've just done one side, this piece we've done two sides. Okay, and now you can see this piece is even more, I, hopefully it's coming across on camera, but it's not as floppy. So if I hold this one, it's a little bit more floppy than this one. So for this project, it's not gonna matter a whole lot. You can either starch both or just one side. I would recommend you at least do something or just be really careful if you don't have any starch and you don't wanna go out and buy any, just be really careful with your seams. So the next thing we're gonna do is take both of these pieces and we're gonna cut them along the diagonal here. And since we've now starched it, we won't have quite as much stretching. See, you can hopefully tell from beginning how um, it's not quite as stretchy anymore. So now I'm just gonna layer these two on top of each other and we're just gonna cut them from corner to corner. Just like that, super easy. And now we've got our four triangles that we're gonna need. And also I'm not gonna pull on it too much, but this edge is a little bit more um, stable now. And actually let's do a sample. Let's just cut this one just so you can kind of see. Okay, so this is a piece that I lightly starched and you can kind of still see the stretch there. It's not bad. Let's take one of these pieces that I have not starched 
and we'll cut that one on the bias and then look at that. Okay, so that's a lot of stretching right there if you're going to be trying to put a block together. And as you can see, my fabric is already kind of distorted even from its original shape. It's no longer perfectly, you know, square. It's got this like kind of bow to it now. So that is why starching is helpful. And that is what I wanted to kind of share with you in today's video. So now that these are prepared, we can go ahead and just set these aside. And we're going to work on these pieces. So these are our A and C pieces. And I've got two pieces here simply because I'm working with my scraps. But if you can do a longer piece, that's fine. You just need to be able to get four pieces that are seven and a quarter inches out of it. So um, I have two of each strip here. And we're just going to sew these together, right sides together one quarter of an inch seam and I'm just not even going to pin them because I did give you guys a little bit of extra leeway for cutting so I'm just going to take both of these over to my machine and we're just going to sew those up. All right so we've got our two pieces here and then now we're just going to press these and I always press towards the dark um, unless otherwise specified by my pattern. So I just set that seam and then I'm going to flip and just press it open. And I like to just do my best to keep it straight. And then we're going to do this one as well. And I press on top of my previous fabric all the time just because I feel like it gives it a second press and it's just faster. And I'm kind of all about <laughs> saving time where I can. All right, and then now we just need to trim these up. And so I can just trim them together if I want, just because that'll make life easier. So I'm just gonna line these up. And as you can see, my edges over here are not perfect, and that is fine. I'm gonna just grab my larger ruler and we need to trim these to seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And it's gonna be a little bit longer than you need this way. There we go. And then we need this to be seven and a quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my ruler here and line up my seven and a quarter there. And this is gonna end up at eight inches just because of just the measurements. And so we'll also have to trim a couple, a little bit of the sides off too. But first we're gonna trim it to seven and a quarter. And you will have a little bit left over as you can see, I just gave you a little bit extra just to make life easier for you. And then now we're gonna trim it this way. And you're gonna to need to trim off about a quarter, well, about an eighth of an inch off of each side just to make it your seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter. And I just did that to make the original cutting instructions a little bit easier for you. Alrighty, so we've got our one, two, three, and four pieces here. And now we're going to go ahead and grab our triangles and we're just going to be careful with these because they are starched but they'll still stretch a little bit. So we're going to take our first piece and we're going to take our triangle and we're going to lay it so that the corner of the triangle is on the white part and the tip is coming over here on to your blue part. And then for this I am going to recommend um, uh, pinning and I'm going to pin at the ends and then I'm also going to pin in the middle because that's going to help give this bias edge a little bit more support. You could even pin, like if, especially if you didn't starch, I would maybe even add a pin here and here. And that's going to help that from stretching when it gets pulled through your machine. Because as your machine pulls this through, your feed dogs are grabbing your fabric and pulling and it can distort this edge. So we're just taking all of these precautions to help make sure that our fabric doesn't stretch. Now you could have just kept this piece whole and you wouldn't have to worry about any of this. But I A, wanted to waste a little bit less fabric and B, I wanted to talk to you about bias seams and how to handle them. And so this is why we are doing it this way. But you could have used four seven and a quarter inch squares if you wanted of this pink fabric and then you wouldn't have to do any of this.
All right, so now we've got all four pieces prepared and we're gonna bring these over to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew using this edge as our guide, one quarter of an inch seam all the way down. And again, just taking care that this doesn't stretch while we're sewing. Alrighty, here are our triangles. Now I'm gonna do what I do in some of the other videos and I'm actually gonna go ahead and press this back before I trim it off. So I'm just gonna set that seam and then just press that back. Okay, we're just gonna do that on all of these. And now we can trim off this edge. Okay, now this is a discarded piece. And if you wanted, you could have best pressed this before we trimmed it. You could actually still do it. And then you can add another piece here and just have, you'd have an opposite pinwheel. So your center square would be the white and then your background would now be the blue color. Um, so I'm just gonna set this aside for a future project. And I didn't wanna make this video too complicated. So I figured we would just save that for later. But whenever you're doing like a half square triangle where you kind of need a specific side of your square, like this side, if we were to, we couldn't use this side, okay? So as you can see, the blue is kind of the smaller bit. If we had put this on here, if we'd put another side on there, it would be opposite. And so we can't really use that for this project. So just something to keep in mind whenever you're doing something like this where you need it to be a specific direction. Alrighty, so here's our squares. And now we're gonna square this up. So we have plenty of fabric here to square it up. Um, and so we're gonna square this up to six and a half. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna place my ruler so it's right along this line because I want as much blue as I possibly can. And so we're gonna be just cutting off a little extra. And whenever I do, um, half square triangles like this where there's more than one piece that's going to be added I will make them just slightly larger than what they need to be that way I end up with a perfect piece if you get too close on these and your sewing is a little wonky or anything like that then it's really hard to try and fix so I just always like to err on the side of caution it does waste a little bit more fabric um, but I prefer to have perfect blocks, like this block is the exact perfect size, in, even if my sewing isn't perfect, I can still end up with a perfect block. So I'm just gonna trim all these up to six and a half. So now we have our four pieces that are identical and all we need to do now is just lay them out. And we're just gonna lay them out according to the pattern and basically that's going to be where your pinks are all coming in here towards the middle and so are your blues. And now you have this illusion that there's a square behind our pinwheel. And now to sew this together, we're going to sew this together, this top row together, and then the bottom row together. And so I'm just going to flip them right sides down. You can throw a pin on here if you want. The other thing that you'll notice is these seams should nest right here. So this pink should butt right up next to that pink and just be perfect. And if you want to pin, and just stick a pin right there. And when you pull that back, you can see that seam is just gonna line up perfectly. And for these pinwheels, I actually do like to pin them. Um, and that way, when I get over to my sewing machine, I know that I'm sewing on the right side. Um, and I know they're all gonna be going the right way. I'm gonna throw another pin up here. And just one more down here. Okay, now we just need to take this to our sewing machine and we're just gonna sew one quarter of an inch. I'm not gonna break my thread in between. Okay, so we've got our sides. And then now what we want to do is we just want to press them going opposite directions. 
So for example, and for this it's not going to matter a whole lot, if I press this way, then when I lay these together, those seams in the center will nest. So I'm going to do that. And I'm just going to scoot this over so you can see the pressing a little better. So we're going to press this bottom one to the right. By the way, if you're doing pinwheels and you really want to, you can also press this seam open. Um, and we can do that. I can show you how to press open here. Uh, that will reduce some of your bulk here in the middle. When I'm pressing open, I'll always press to one side first like this. And then I'll go ahead and just take my finger there and just carefully press it back. So now they're pressed open. That's going to reduce some of this bulk in here. And I usually will stick a tailor's clapper on there as well and just let that cool. And then um, as that seam cools, it's going to stay nice and flat for you. And then when we sew these together, you won't have like a huge bump in the center of your pinwheel. Here, I'm going to just flip this down on top. And then we're going to just line up this center. And now you don't really have seams to nest. So I think in some aspects, um, pressing your seams open can be a little bit more difficult because you have to make sure they look like they're lined up versus you can really feel it when you're pressing your seams to one side. But for the sake of the pinwheel, I think pressing open is always a good idea because it can really reduce that center bulk there. Okay, now we can just take this to our machine and sew along this edge and we'll be done with our block. All right, and here it is. Here's our lovely block, and we have a nice center there. So now we just need to press again. Okay, and if you feel like that's too much, you can press that open. If you do, there's a little string in there you're gonna have to clip. Um, I'm actually fine with it, just like this. So I am gonna leave it. And then we just need to trim it up to our 12 and a half inches. And this particular 12 and a half inch ruler has white lines that go right in the direct center and then there's a small little circle here in the middle. So hopefully you can see now, but there's white lines that indicate the exact center of the block and then there's this tiny little circle right here in the middle. And so that is perfect for these blocks. I can line up my diagonal line here. I can do those um, horizontal and vertical lines and know that I'm gonna have a nice accurate block. And this block actually looks really good. I've just got a little bit extra over here on one side. And you know from watching previous videos that I prefer, let's go this way, to trim up my blocks, even if it's just a little bit. Okay, that's all we trimmed off. And there we go. Here is our finished. Uh, double pinwheel or square in a pinwheel or whatever you want to call it, block number nine. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit about working with bias seams today and plus we ended up with a really cute block at the end. All right guys, that was block number nine, our pinwheel block. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. So thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.